these are bunny tails from the beach. You know, we used to, there's little things actually, they don't have round things like that, but they become round in mine. My daughter's pointed this out to me. She said it's like a way, it's kind of a version of mindfulness. You know, my drawing and planning these things are a way of, um, there's some kind of, it's not like therapy, but they're very um, kind of restorative. I do really, I really do like making work. I mean, it's something that contains me. It's like a, it kind of feels like an, a necessity. I find it a little scary if I'm not going to be able to. I actually do a lot of like these kind of sketches like this actually in like as I go to sleep at night and things too and I, and I also make some of them just where they're with my eyes closed I'm tr when I was trying to think how to draw William Buckley and I thought I'll just do it with my eyes shut and see what happens. This was done with my eyes shut and it was the idea of trying to get away from I really don't like realism and I was really trying to get away from it. I mean I, I, I don't think I have too much trouble with being realistic but but it's like I wanted to kind of try and, you know, free myself up. And I do actually like the fact that this fish is swimming into the fish trap, which would be totally unintentional. And then it's the, these are reminders of the, the blue sea, him being pink and then red hair, and then the blue, the indigenous woman being blue with black hair and the baby being blue. And I just, instead of having black and white, I wanted pink and blue. It's like me developing a vocabulary. So I'm, yeah, I'm just doing little notes for myself. It is interesting to look back. I did these, I don't know, like two years ago, I think, and trying to work out. I don't know why he's got shorts on. I also do it with my left, you know, with my other hand, and I do both. But I mean, these are just done straight, but they still don't look that different from that. But it's a really rough sketch, so that I'm, but it's so that I'm not getting bound up with like how to do it, but thinking where I have things. No idea. Oh, that's saying the canvas in the kitchen, that's saying where I should, what picture I should do it on. Oh, there's, a, there's probably about 10 of these books for this particular project. So then, and then I go from a decision as to whether it's going to be like oil on canvas or if it's going to be a kind of collage which will be charcoal and gouache and, and um, book pages or on paper. I started, and I actually worked this out the other day, so in 1994 I made a picture from the age, deaths, age, births, deaths and marriages page because my father died. So then I started the book pages a bit, a bit then, but then I really, really went on with them in 2004 when my mother died. So it was like when she had, she was a massive reader and there were like lots of books that we all we laid all the books out on the in the house, right through the house upstairs, down everywhere, and all chose them. And then, and actually, what happened was you got a lot of books that you already had. So, I, you know, recycled them. Is how I put it. And then that ran out. And then so then I um, buy them. But I've been doing them for a long time. The thing, the decision I make during this is also to like, well, I was thinking about this with the swan, is the swan will be like negative space. And I like the fact that here Trevor Jones, who used to own the book, is in there. It really, really gives me a lot of pleasure. And there's some, some books I've got where it says, you know, happy birthday mum, and it's from me to my mother. And I like having those, those little emotional connections in there. The book pages I mainly choose so that I want text, no text, like I don't want too much text. It's like if you have too much text, it's like really a different surface to work on. So I like having, it's like what I really like are the pages that aren't as, don't have um, too much written on them. So you only get a few of those in each book. So you need to be able to find some like really kind of cheap crap old books that are, you can tear up. So then I, this is one of the things I really enjoy doing is putting some things into some of these spaces which I'm trying to think if there are, there's not so many in this picture but here there's a space which I'll put something in, like I'll choose an image, I think I'll put the great tradition in there maybe. 
And the other thing when I'm doing this is I choose between a torn edge or a cut one. And this I would make a torn edge, so I'd put that in there uh, to get rid of. Oh, and, and in here there's some, so home is a prisoner. I don't actually really, I don't know if I like that, so I'll probably put something else over that. And then I kind of manipulate the accident, so I'll go over that. So maybe home as a prisoner might be useful. Maybe that might make sense for William Beckley. So I might put that there. No, I think I'll put that there. I'll spend a bit of time thinking about that. So I like this one, like to my three sons, Ian, Douglas and Gordon, victims of the principle herein described, this book is effectively dedicated. What the hell does that mean? This is a point where I kind of decide the palette because if I'm going to go with like blues, I'd probably use blue book spines, but I think I'm going to go with um, the orange ones, but I still can have like a blue one in there or two. But I think this one I've been waiting to use this, the go between, because that is what he was. So probably there and... So I'll um, pr probably at the moment I'll do that and then I'll work out later if that's... I might take one of them out. But I also do like these two different blues. Like there's the blues that are these really kind of like... Um, um, that's like a thalo blue and white and this is like an ultramarine blue and white. So it's like I have... And there's also the different oranges like these ones. So I probably would swap this one around. So it's like a little work within the work kind of thing. And then the next stage is I would seal this and then I work with gouache into that. It really works for me, work, having my studio at home. And it, it always has. Like I worked all through having small children. I used to get up at five and, you know, I'd just get two hours or something. And I mean, I still do that. I like being able to go for half an hour or an hour or a day or go back at night or I mean it just suits me I love it being I like the two things being connected but separate it feels like a great privilege to me the thing about these two spaces is that like the, the where we were have been, the domestic space and mm. where I you know cook and live and all of that um is that that is also a thinking space for me is where I draw mm. and plan pictures and have ideas like all the sketches and things. I never do any of those in here. They're always done either as I'm about to go to sleep or, or while I'm having dinner or you know sitting at the table. It's like they're in that space and I would never paint in that space. It's mm. like, so, and then in here, this is divided. So this is the, um, the area for gouache. Then I know this pink is, so it says very good pink. It's like, it's really nice pink. Yeah. And so that's for gouache here, so that I don't accidentally dip a brush with terps on it into. And then in yes. over here, I work on the oil. I either work up against the wall mm -hmm. or on the table. And I do actually a bit of both. Yeah. I work flat and then I put it up right and it looks very different. You don't use an easel though. I've got an easel out there, but I haven't used it for about 10 years. Yeah, so interesting. I use it to kind of put store things on. So we we decided to call the picture, the exhibition the History Pictures. Where do you want to put it? Over there? Um, maybe over here. It turned out to be a better title than I'd imagined. It's like I thought of that specifically as relating to mm. William Buckley, but it's actually worked out that it does in different ways describe the three aspects of the show. So the first, how I now see it, is that the first aspect of history is like my personal history. The second will be like history of William Buckley and the third will be revisionist history. So it's like the third is a more directly feminist, there's a kind of feminist um, subtext to all of them, but that it's like they move from the personal out towards that. This is like the initial, like the most personal version of it. This is the autobiographical version. It's like my history. So it's my first phone number, the dogs, which were my son Charlie's, that have they've been in my work for a long time. And this is like the landscape of the holiday house that we went to, which where you'd look through the trees to the sea. 
And nearly everyone I talk to goes, oh, yeah, I remember my first phone number. <laughs> well, I don't know if you, I do. Well, maybe your generation don't, don't because you... Do. I, no, I don't. I can so probably you, remember the first four numbers. But. No, I can... E W F four five seven O is what <laughs> I remember. And it's like, it was really... How I, old are you with your first... Uh, well, I, I mean, it was partly that my father was an obstetrician and mm. so... The phone was very important to yeah. like you know people to bring and say you know my waters are broken oh, or yeah, whatever. Of course. And so he had to sit by the phone, and we always used to say if the house burnt down, what we would do is take the phone. <laughs> and I thought like what a ridiculous thing. So the phone was very important, but it's also I mean, pretty mobile. You know, it's yeah. like I remember quite a few of my early wow, phone numbers. Wow, that's amazing not, what you can. Yeah, but it was like uh, that's that was also that I wanted this text in there that wasn't mm -hmm. like saying you know i believe this or, or a that literal or description whatever. it no, was just, almost just yeah, like a memory yeah yeah and that's also something where things just come as like an idea you think yeah i'd like to make a picture about that do you i think colors are kind of like that don't you yeah like, definitely uh, yeah the thing about william buckley that it, it's been a long interest of mine because partly because we lived, we holidayed and then we lived down that west coast of Victoria where he spent a lot of time and I could really imagine where he was so that kind of helped me, um, uh, I don't know, paint, paint my way of seeing it. He was um, a bricklayer in London who committed some kind of minor crime and was sent as a convict to Australia and he escaped and he finished up spending 32 years living with the Wathaurung to the extent that he forgot how to speak English, which is something that is fascinating, I think. So it's a, it's a story about he became a go-between. It's about, it's about language. And, and it's also, for me, it was like what I was interested in was these women who were invisible. It was like the indigenous women he lived with and apparently had a child with one. I mean, these stories are hard to confirm. But then, and then later when he left, he married... A white, he left him, he was given pardoned and he married a white woman and I always wonder what she, what she thought about, he, you know, asked him about what he'd done in those 32 years, how, you know, what was that life like? So that I'm interested in kind of trying to make visible the invisible. So it is to do with like me thinking about what is my understanding of being alive. It, it, we can see in the paintings yeah. like I've wanted to paint him not as this solo figure looking it's like in a group mm. of people where and there's there's you know the things the baskets and that kind of thing there but then you've got this is the sort of like contemporary life here with the mobile phone and i mean is this sort of that's a very intentional thing because mm. i didn't want in the thing of it being the history pictures i didn't want it to be me pretending i was there i wanted like mm. this is where i'm this is my perspective and it's mm. now with my computer my phone my camera mm. my hairbrush all these things <laughs> that kind of matter to me and <laughs> so I, that was an intentional thing of saying um that's me looking back mm. to that william buckley talks about seeing a bunya but warren ponds and warren ponds is where mm. there's all these shopping shops and things in geelong and, uh, and my son charlie <laughs> lives there and i said what's What's Warren Ponds like? He said, you can't tell now. It's just built, you know. But I always used to, to shop there. So it's, I love the idea that they saw a bunny at Warren Ponds. <laughs> just in Aldi or something. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so what I was trying to work out, how would I draw? It's like trying mm. to think, how would I draw William Buckley? And I thought, how would I draw a bunny? And then I thought, actually, I'll do it as a self-portrait. Then the next is the Philip Guston the, the Philip Guston is like seeing a painting, the painting of Philip Guston's called My Pantheon, which is um, a painting of the light bulb, which is characteristic with his studio and the part of the easel, and then a list of the artists that he admires, which or like he ta takes in his head into the studio. The ones I take into the studio, on the whole, are more recent and also are uh, women. There's the the Philip Guston, my version of the Philip Guston painting, My mm. Pantheon, and there's my version of it, My Pantheon. And then, Which is an existing painting put into the painting. Yeah, that's right. And then this painting here is this one where I've come around to thinking I don't want to do something about a Pantheon, and it's like, oh, this is not finished, but it's like a list. Mm. So I said, not so much a Pantheon, more a list. It's good to make a like, list. Well, it's also not hierarchical, so it's like yeah. a, it's a different thing. 
but it was also a conscious ex um, exercise of thinking of like naming women artists mm -hmm. so that they're not, you know, rather than them being invisible. But so, so that other people can name them too, like people yeah. might come and take notes or, you know. The thing is that, the, that it dawned on me like quite late was that it's not that, that the women artists have not existed, it's they've been invisible. They've been invisible, it's like, and they've been invisible to me. I did not go to art school being taught that. No. We live in a time now where we are rewriting a history through yeah, a female like, lens and mm -hmm. it's almost like that has to happen through painting as well which is quite an interesting way to look at well, your work. Well I still think that we do live in a patriarchy and I think mm. I'm part of it so it's kind of like having to unthink that. It's like stuff dawning on me really mm. and it's like for that took me a while. With, with lots of paintings that I love and with your work it's a way of working out what you see you know and, and sometimes yeah, literally true. working out what you see no, but, true. but also just making sense of what you see in your environment but also in your mind like your sketch of you know William Buckley's partner with her blue face it's like uh, she obviously didn't have a blue face but you're working out what you well, see. Well I was just thinking how do I depict this and and the thing is that I thought I thought about this later is that my husband has was very red-haired and pale right. and kind of freckly and worked out in the boiling hot sun in Broken Hill and mm. did get melanoma, that's what he died from. Yeah, right. And so I think it's like, and also he was much older than me, so it was like mm. this sense where it, my experience connected with that, whereas... Cause you I identified used, with her. Well, he went yeah, to yeah. Oxford the year I was born. Huh. And I remember thinking, I used to think, so what happened? Mm. What was that bit of your life? There's a whole chunk of his life I didn't know, which mm. is much... So I think mm. there's that, you know, it's like I think it, all these things mm. combine. And so that layering of history is really interesting. I think that ties back to the title, the history pictures, because you're layering your own history in your relationship over that. Well, I'm realising it after the fact. I did not yeah. plan no, that. No, it's, it's unconscious. Like, yeah, yeah. It's and really interesting. Yeah. But it's why you're, why you're attracted to a certain story well, is quite why interesting. Stay, yeah, you can't, yeah. you've got to have some really deep connection with it, I think, yeah, with yeah. something. I think a lot of the really interesting stuff that happens in uh, making images is in the making mm. and it's like where you are concentrating on making it and you don't realise what's, mm. you know, you, that's why the whole thing of an artist statement is kind of nonsense. The thing that I find slightly, it's interesting and it's also slightly horrifying is how long I stay with images and I the window has been a like a looking from the inside out has been something in my work for a really like years for all sorts of reasons i see the world through a psychoanalytic lens and so i see that the inside and the what's going on inside your head affects how you experience the outside world what's you, happening in the outside world affects your head so there's a porousness between those two things and i think the pictures were about that like for a long time they were about the like the table as the inside world and that was actually where my real interest was and then the outside world would be like a more general kind of landscape i mean there maybe sometimes it was a bit more specific but it wasn't really the real drive of the thing for me was depicting and kind of celebrating the domestic like the interior the to domestic as it made concrete like my interior life so it wasn't just like but i mean it was about focusing on the you know, the teapot, the coffee pot, the computer, all of those things that made up my life. And I notice in the, my first phone number, the painting, is that the window is slightly starting to recede because I deliberately kind of cut it out at the halfway. And then in the other paintings, most of the rest of the paintings, it's not there at all. And the, and the table is the other image that, like, part of my language, which is seeing the landscape over the table and that the table has become something that kind of floats more and between the two spaces. So it's like, for me, it's like where making the work tells you something about yourself rather than the other way around. You kind of realise things from how the process works. I think it's told me that, uh, I don't know how much, I mean, I think it's in part to do with the fact of my husband dying and like, we had a very happy 40-year marriage and I think it's been like this sense that I am now more out in the world. It's like by force of circumstance but also I'm quite kind of 
ready for that. But yeah, I think it tells me that my life is changing and I see the world differently. I think the, you know, I don't, you don't, it's not all autobiographical, but the life and the work do affect each other. Well, the w life affects the work, really, inflects the work. I love all those women that took a long time to get there because I think that that's a realistic kind of way of looking at the practice. I think everybody does it differently, but yeah. I think that that is their, I, I kind of, feels like that to me and that is mm. partly that I've had two marriages and three children mm, and it's mm. like that it does feed into the work but it also slows it down. I feel like things happen mm. and then I don't feel like I think, oh, so I'm going to have this late starting slow. I don't oh, feel right, like yeah, that. No, I just no. think, oh, that's, I look back and think that's what happened. Yeah, it's cool. It's like, and you're just doing it day by day, mm. you know, what you want to do and what you think you should do. Yeah, And it's, it's good. like, and you don't always get it right. <laughs> I think the hardest thing is for me is going to be with this show is to stop. Mm. It's like it's going well, to be like I'm going to go, from. oh, I have to let the rest, because I push a lot of life away to, mm. to do this. I think, I think everyone is different. I mean, every artist is different. But in general, and it's certainly been my experience, is that it takes a long time for an artist to form. I, I feel like now things are beginning for me and it's been a long, yeah, it's a long process. It's been a it's been a kind of like long and windy path, oh. and it's all. But I don't I don't. It's not a path where I look back and regret it. I think that's you know that's how it ha has happened, and it feels like a good moment for me at the moment.